Implicit differentiation is a section that causes a bit of confusion, but that could be because you're not comfortable with the chain rule. So first make sure you're happy with differentiating functions using the chain rule, and then take a look at implicit differentiation. So very often we use implicit differentiation when we've got a function in a form where y is not alone on one side. y is not the subject. I don't have it in the form y equal to f of x is equal to something with x's in. Now we can make y the subject of the formula here, but then we'll have a plus minus root. So in this case, that is not a function because we've got a circle and we see that is not a function, but we're asked for the slope of the tangent line to the curve at 4, 3. Now the fact that x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 is not a function, doesn't mean I can't calculate the slope. Now, traditionally, we use derivatives to calculate slopes. So I'm looking for dy dx, but to find dy dx is now a bit more complicated because I'm working with something that's firstly not a function and it's not in the form y equal to. But what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate both sides of this equation. Now, the trick comes into remembering that y is some function of x. So if I've got y squared, it's a function of x squared. So this is a typical example of where we use a chain rule to differentiate. If I've got a function squared, the chain rule tells me that the derivative of the function squared is 2 times the function to the power 1 times the derivative of the function. All right, however we represent that. So that's what we need to remember. So differentiating the left-hand side, I've got 2x plus the derivative of 2y is then 2y, but we don't stop there because y is a function of x, so I must still differentiate the y. Now, y is a function of x. I don't know what it looks like, but I know I still need to add that derivative from the chain rule. So I'm just calling it dy dx, and the derivative of 25 is 0. Now, I want dy dx alone because I'm after the slope of the tangent line, so we know derivatives get us there. So dy dx. So if you want to make dy dx, the subject of the formula, we've got minus 2x, so dy dx is minus 2x over 2y, which is just minus x over y. So in this case, this specific example, I want the slope of a tangent line. I'm going to use m to indicate the slope. That's just the derivative in the point 4, 3. Just take note of the notation there. So that means I substitute x equal to 4, y equal to 3 in the derivative. And that's minus 4 over 3. And if we look at the sketch, that looks like a reasonable number for the slope of that tangent line. So let's look at another example. Now this one, we can make y the subject of the formula very easily, and there's no problems with it. The reason I'm doing it is just to show you that implicit differentiation gets me to the right answer. But the we normally use implicit differentiation for some more complicated examples, but we're looking at the simple one just to make sure we're happy. If I had to change the subject of the formula for that one, y would be 1 over x. And I know the derivative of 1 over x, or x to the power minus 1, is minus x to the power minus 2, or minus 1 over x squared. So we're going to keep that there and see if we get the same with implicit differentiation, which we will. So we differentiate both sides. Now... Yet again, y is a function of x. So I've got x times some function of x. Now, firstly, it's a multiplication, so I have to use the product rule. So make sure you know the product rule before you look at this section. Go back, make yourself happy, make sure you're happy with the product rule, then we look at this one. So the derivative of x times a derivative of a function, or x times a function of x, the product rule says it's the first one times the derivative of the second one. What's the derivative of y? It's just dy dx plus the derivative of x times y. And the derivative of 1 on the right-hand side is 0. So yet again, we can make dy dx the subject of the formula, and I've got minus y over x. So now we look at the right-hand side, and we're like, wait a minute, is that really the same? Well, let's see what minus y over x is. If I've got minus y over x, y is 1 over x, so it's minus 1 over x divided by x, and that's just minus 1 over x squared. So we get the same answer. We don't stress about that. That's just to show you. But take note of the product rule. So let's look at this example. Another simple example, and you can now make y the subject as the fourth root of x, 
or x to the power 1 over 4 and see that you get to the same answer. But again, differentiating the left hand side and the right hand side, but I've got y to the power 4, which means it's a function of x to the power 4. So the derivative of that is 4 times that function cubed times the derivative of the function. Chain rule. And the derivative of x is equal to 1. So dy dx is equal to 1 over 4y cubed. And you can check if you let if y is equal to x to the power 1 over 4, if you get to the same answer by differentiating that. But you will. All right, so now let's look at a real example. And let me just mention later on when we look at the derivatives of curves like functions, exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric functions, inverse trigonometric functions, then we're still going to see how the product rule, the chain rule, and the quotient rule applies to those functions and similar with implicit differentiation. We'll see later. Now we're just sticking to power functions. So yet again, we want a slope of a tangent line at a point, but it's just one step further. The important thing is getting to that derivative. So the derivative of the left hand side, 3x squared. That's it. Now, minus, we want the derivative of 2x times y. So I've got 2x times y cubed. So we want that derivative. So it's again a product rule, but we have to keep track of what we're doing. So the minus applies to the whole thing. 2x times the derivative of y cubed, which is 3y squared dy dx, chain rule because y is a function of x, plus the derivative of the 2x, which is 2 times y cubed is equal to, I've got minus 15, the derivative of that is 0. So now we've got to do some algebraic manipulation, make dy dx the subject of the formula. If you want to try that yourself, pause here and we'll see if we get to the same answer. So we've got 3x squared minus 6xy squared times dy dx plus 2y cubed is equal to 0. So let's get dy dx alone. We've got minus 3x squared minus 2y cubed. So dy dx is that right hand side divided by minus 6xy squared. Now you can make that prettier by dividing or multiplying the top and bottom with minus 1, but that doesn't really matter in this case. Just want to check that I didn't make a mistake, and I did make a mistake. This is minus 2y squared. So that becomes plus 2y squared, and there we go. All right. So we're not finished with this one. We want the gradient of the tangent line, and that gradient is dy dx in the point 1, 2. So we substitute that in. x is 1, y is 2, so I've got minus 3 plus 16, 2 times 8, divided by minus 6 times 1 times 4. So minus 6 times 24, so that's minus 24. So that gives me 13 over minus 24. And there we go. So that is implicit differentiation. Now it can get uglier and messier. And like I said, when we look at the other functions, we look at how to use implicit differentiation for logarithmic, trigonometric, and exponential functions.